Uh, the topic for today's uh, webinar is application modernization on Google Cloud. Uh, as you probably are already aware, this uh, session is part of a three-piece series, actually, that Google Cloud and Sears have been doing. The previous ones were infrastructure modernization and data analytics. So this one's actually a very interesting session because uh, we, we're going to be talking a lot about Kubernetes, which has uh, traditionally been a Google Cloud stronghold. Uh, you know, Google having open source Kubernetes several years back, it's got uh, quite a bit of strength and expertise there. So, and specifically, actually, we'll be talking about Anthos, which is uh, the next big thing that Google Cloud has come up in the Kubernetes front. And it should be really interesting for you guys. Uh, just like to introduce my speakers here. We have Mr. Roman Rani, who is a partner engineer with Google Cloud. He's been around for uh, quite a long time, and he's dealt with a whole range of customers. Got, he's got significant experience uh, working closely with our customers. Uh, and he'll be sharing his insights from what he has been, you know, what, what conversations he's been having specifically around Anthos. Um, and also we have uh, Mr. Omesh Kumar, who is a lead cloud architect with Sears. He's also been closely working with the clients and uh, uh, implementing some of these workloads. Uh, both of these should be very insightful uh, sessions for you. We hope you take away some concrete points from this session. So I'd just like to hand over at this point to, to Mr. Irani. Uh, but before that, I'll just also like to just briefly present the agenda for the discussion. Uh, Roman will be walking us through uh, Google Cloud's, uh, the, the previous years, how Kubernetes has progressed on Google Cloud, and just an overview of all the products. Um, and then we'll be getting into uh, the more, uh, slightly into a deep dive uh, with Anthos. And then of course, uh, the, more, the, the areas where probably you'll be more interested in, which is the hybrid approach to Anthos. Uh, so Roman, uh, handing over to you now. Thank you, Aditya. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. So let's get uh, started today. As Aditya mentioned, uh, I'm going to be taking you for the next 20, 25 minutes approximately into what uh, Google Cloud uh, you know, app modernization story is, a little bit of history there, how we reached here. And then specifically, I'll be talking about uh, Google Cloud Anthos and what comprises that suite of services in that and helps you modernize applications today. So moving forward, before we get into uh, you know, any specific uh, thing from a technology perspective, just wanted to uh, set the context first in terms of the hybrid market today and where organizations are. So if I uh, present to you these uh, three uh, areas right now, so. Uh, it's it's not it's it's like a completely given thing that organizations are moving to the cloud and they clearly see the benefits of a public cloud and it, as it helps them to you know scale brings them economies of cost and much more right but and primarily if you if you look at it right um, lift and shift has been the dominant uh, workload that's moved to the cloud now having said that it's still no surprise that it's just a fraction of those applications have really moved uh, you know to the cloud a majority of them still remain uh, you know on prem and uh, there are several reasons for those applications to be uh, still uh, you know residing on, on on prem and some of those reasons could range from uh, you know there could be security concerns there could be concerns around whether we'll be retaining the same kind of control we had how about certain policies that we used to apply so on and so forth right plus along with other things like when it comes to cost avoiding lock-in tons of such uh, i would say valid concerns are there from organizations so that they can be assured uh, that when they move to the cloud will they able to still continue to do the uh, you know work or basically deploy develop apps in the same way that they have been doing before plus retain their control over it now having said that hybrid also is a real thing now because it's not just about having a lock-in just to one particular cloud but organizations are slowly also accepting the fact that they may be using uh, you know multiple services and for that they are completely open to using it from multiple cloud providers so you can start seeing that the challenges they may start having in terms of saying i have a cluster maybe running in on premise maybe a cluster running some of my uh, applications is running maybe in a public cloud vendor one but probably something else is running my qa or test environment is running in public uh, cloud you know two and so on and so forth so you can see that you know there's quite a bit of i would say overload in terms of where workloads are being run how you will be able to control it, so on and so forth. 
but at the same time it's a given that public cloud plans as well as hybrid uh, cloud is a reality today now having said that again some numbers uh, you know over here but primarily if you uh, look at it right the last part which i want to focus about since about uh, two or three points initially are the ones which we covered is also to ensure these organizations who want to move to the cloud that hey when it comes to managing and controlling costs right uh, what sort of things as the cloud offer in, or whatever be the kind of workload that you're trying to move over there right they want to retain their confidence also that we may not overrun particular costs plus various other things that they have been doing uh, you know you know so to reiterate uh, this point over here uh, organizations also want to ensure that it's not just about just the cloud uh, you know computing costs that they may incur via various services but you know just overall tco perspective costs also when it comes to overheads that they may have in administrative costs in running their workloads on premise are these things also getting addressed to a large extent so having said that right uh, here are several trade offs that any it team in an organization is forced to make uh, when they are trying to move workloads to the cloud or run them in a hybrid fashion so first up obviously is the whole security versus agility the point here is that uh, you know with the uh, advent of new technologies new frameworks that are coming out today obviously organizations want to use them at the earliest and take full benefit of what advantages they offer but at the same time you know the security teams are also concerned whether the kind of applications that are being developed they do address uh, you know uh, everything from an overall security point of view plus they want to make sure that we do not sacrifice security when it comes to agility so if it means that we have to release software often still it is required that it's tested well it uh, passes a certain kind of quality to it and only then it is moved in production the other thing which i mentioned was about uh, to, to a certain extent but to uh, you know uh, reference it again over here is the reliability versus cost um, you know thing so here uh, generally the thing has always been on on premise that in case you want to bring in redundancy you may have to you know sort of duplicate your resources over but this might also turn into a large amount of resources be underutilized so as a result of that when you're moving to the cloud they just want to make sure that is this addressed to a large extent should we require the scale will we get it of course it's fine that you know you're charged additionally but they need to understand that to a large extent and the third point which is again a very important point is that organizations have seen the benefits of open source technologies they do not want to get locked into a particular cloud provider and maybe log get locked into proprietary technologies so as a result of which the decisions that they are taking today they want to be assured also that the choice and technologies that they make are open enough is consistent is also you know uh, something that they can keep innovating without the fear of getting locked in so having said all of these things right uh, plus in general right if you think about it the cloud is hard uh, in a sense in case you want to move your workloads to it we talked about certain things around being consistent in the security policies me from a cost perspective etc but you can see that there are many other concerns also which you see over here i mean uh, uh, you know it team managers are also concerned is it that every time i have to new use a new cloud do i have to understand the way it works uh, different technologies that could possibly be a lock in etc do my team members have to learn a new language etc etc right so if you look at it right um, it's not easy for enterprises today running applications on prem uh, and still be able to address some of the valid concerns they may have in moving to the cloud so obviously what they're looking for is is there like a common way by which i could build deploy as well as run my applications right is there a way by using these three uh, you know concepts is there a portable mechanism out there that can help make this a reality so having said that uh, the whole point is yes they want to drive their transformations but at the same time they want to keep absolute control over what they are using and obviously the consequences of that 
So if you look at the way Google is looking at multi-cloud principles, right? This is a given that you know organizations will continue to use one or more cloud providers for the same. But there are three key things that we think about, which is that the stack that you may want to choose should be software-based. Yes, it should be based on open source. We all understand the benefits of open source that is out there. Plus, there needs to be a way by which we could abstract out the infrastructure and don't keep a dependence on that. Having said that, this is what we believe are some of the key principles of modern application development. You must have heard about most of these uh, you know, uh, topics from time to time. But fundamentally, when you look at it, right, these are six key, uh, I would say, areas that we believe constitute modern application development. And without going too much into detail for each of the points, I'll just touch upon a few of them uh, you know, over here. So obviously, the first part is the whole open software or the open source software. We all know the benefits of that. The second area, microservices, uh, you know, is a is a general now a paradigm where instead of building out large monolithic applications, possibly it makes sense again on a uh, you know case by case basis to see if we could abstract out sort of smaller services away. The you know uh, the trade not trade off, but the result of doing that is it allows you to have smaller teams working with the specific tool sets that they are well suited to, and thereby it also helps in the agility and um, the overall software quality also if they're able to focus on key services only. The third thing, containerization, and that's pretty much uh, when I was talking about would there be a portal way by which we could you know, build, deploy, as well as run applications. And that's the whole containerization. For those of you who are familiar with Docker, uh, you would have seen how that tool set sort of revolutionized the way all of us developers think about building, packaging, and deploying our applications. At the same time, getting the portability. So just being able to uh, you know, sort of compartmentalize your application and all of its dependencies into one unit of work, which is the container, uh, you know, brings about huge benefits, as we have seen. Now, what you'll see uh, you know, in, the, in the last three or in the bottom row is to do with, you know, I would say, while we are building software, how do we ensure that we have a repeatable process? How do we ensure quality? How do we build in testing as early as possible into our process of uh, building uh, software as well as deploying it so that we are notified as early as possible as we can? How do we sort of then take the hardware abstraction away and when it comes to deployment, how do we just look at it as one big large data center so that we leave it to the orchestrator? to decide where the workload needs to be deployed, how to make optimum use of the hardware, and so on and so forth. So that's primarily the whole CI, CD, DevOps part of it, as well as the orchestration part of it. I'll come to specifically Kubernetes that you may have heard about, uh, which is primarily our orchestration layer for the containers. And uh, not the least is the area around services and management. Now. It, this is all about observability, understanding what is happening in the system, health of our system, capturing essential metrics right from source level to as your abstraction goes over, you know, even to the services, service level objectives, and so forth. So that the whole idea is you know whether the system is healthy or not. You are able to tap into any kind of, I would say, metrics that you're monitoring and which if they go above or below a particular threshold that you may have set, you, so that you get notified and accordingly the right actions are taken. So the whole idea is how do, uh, you know, many software or I would say open source software components sort of come together to meet these requirements which you're seeing over today. But in summary, these are some of the key trends that we are seeing which constitute modern application development. Having said that, if we have to just highlight some of the key technologies that have helped to make some of those things a reality today. One has been Docker. Uh, the other one, as you sort of uh, you know deploy more containers, you need an orchestration layer that can help to do multiple things. Uh, so this orchestration layer, which was open sourced again uh, by Google, which is Kubernetes, helps to do multiple things, ranging from where the workloads are running, optimizing the underlying hardware that's out there, abstracting out into, you know I would say, artifacts that programmers probably understand a lot better, so on and so forth. And of course, uh, when you run any of these services in production, there are multiple things that go on around 
how do we collect metrics in a uniform fashion how do we even collect uh, or maybe pass on security policies networking routing etc for these services so that's istio uh, a sort of fully managed version of it which is specific to an anthos thing which i'll talk about later is also helps you to achieve that so given these fundamental technologies it's no surprise that when it comes to containers we've been doing this thing for a long time and uh, i'm sure that these numbers are definitely uh, not words of what you're seeing over here but everything at google even when it comes to us developers trying to uh, you know introduce a new feature do our own testing even internally everything runs on a container even when you look at consumer applications for example if you take an uh, you know example of gmail for example when you're send sending out an email that itself is a container that gets spawned behind the scenes does its work and then goes off right so the whole idea of a uh, uh, whole software compartmentalization with their whole dependencies running them as one unit which is what we know as a container has been there at google since a long time and looking at the sheer scale of containers that we had to launch it's no surprise that when we started this, this uh, thing uh, seeing a mainstream uh, you know application of it we knew that at some point in time an orchestration layer to manage this whole thing is going to be a given so this shows our entire history of how uh, you know eventually you know anthos which i'll talk about now which is our modernization platform came into being but you can see it's been like nearly two decades approximately where starting from borg which is our internal cluster uh, you know management tool you can see the progression that's happening with certain contributions being made to the linux kernel that sort of helped to do some of the things that docker did behind the scenes of course around 2013 when docker launched we know it completely revolutionized the way we build package deploy software so starting from there uh, if you see you'll start seeing some of the first moments where we took borg rechristened it uh, you know made it open source uh, named it uh, kubernetes and uh, it's been like about 5 uh, years now that we've had a fully managed version of gk uh, sorry of kubernetes also called google kubernetes and gke available on gcp since then you know we have seen customers coming back to us that hey they like gke but it's running in gcp what if you could give us a similar kind of uh, experience you know on premise also so that's when we started thinking about how about bringing some of these technologies to an on prem environment also we did that via the gke on prem announcement and last year at our next conference in 2019 april approximately we announced anthos anthos is a suite of services based on open source technologies of course but it helps you run your uh, you know software or maybe basically clusters of software on on premise in our cloud in other clouds and still gives you various other things like a common control plane uniform observability and so forth right so if you see it's not something that's arrived overnight but over consistent ways of running containers at scale and at each point in time you will see that we will start pushing the technologies that have grown inside of google to the outside world in the form of open source which you see so fundamentally you can look at docker you can look at kubernetes you can look at um, you know the gk uh, managed uh, version which is in gcp the gk on prem these things sort of start getting together into the anthos solution which you'll see in a while so having said the context there uh, let me now talk about anthos which is our application modernization platform and if you see it's not just one piece of software but basically some of these things which i have been talking about which all come together to make this a reality uh, so in short uh, anthos is built on open source and it empowers of course many personas in your organization by personas if you are looking at what kind of developer productivity things do we have in place or how does it make it easier for the infrastructure person to handle it similarly if you are looking at you know the sres and they want to monitor what's going on in the system what do we have there so fundamentally the open source technologies that you're talking about these are k native uh, then istio for the service mesh and kubernetes uh, for the container orchestration what you have like kubernetes is anthos gk similarly istio is anthos service mesh and k native is cloud run those are basically fully managed uh, you know versions of these services that we are running on gcp and which are available to you also so should you have any workloads today which for example 
you want to bring in some of the stuff that you've done on Docker and Kubernetes running on on-premise, yes, you could bring them over to our platform also. Or when you look at the en entire Anthos story, it's perfectly possible to maybe continue running them in place where they are, continue to modernize them there itself, but still be able to use Anthos as a common control plane to basically visualize all your clusters and then manage the services there. So having said that, let's look at what are the pieces of Anthos, uh, you know, software uh, solution that you have. And, uh, you know, as in the later, uh, the next couple of sessions that we have following this one, we will also be going into specific details of this. So it will start getting clearer what goes on behind the scenes. So when you look at this uh, building blocks over here, which comprise the entire Anthos uh, solution, uh, the way I would want you to look at this is that what you see at the bottom are basically where you could run your containerized workload. So these could be in uh, Google Cloud. These could be in any other public cloud. It could be in your own on-premise uh, data center. And obviously, you see the edge over uh, edge also over here. We are working on that to see how some of those components could be got to the edge also. So the idea is that you should be able to run these clusters wherever you would want to. Having said that, the common thing that sort of goes across the whole thing is containers. So that's where we have the container management layer. And obviously, Anthos GKE is the fully managed version uh, of that. So th that, that whole container management, it comprises, of course, of Docker and Kubernetes and all of that together to make that uh, layer. On top of it is the service mesh that gives you uniform observability, networking, routing, and so on and so forth. On top, we've got an application development that makes it both easier for developers to even sort of run serverless containers via Cloud Run for Anthos. So behind the scenes, they don't have to worry about the Kubernetes constructs. But when we talk about GCP Marketplace, for those of you who are familiar with uh, Google Cloud uh, Platform and have used the console, you know that there is a GCP Marketplace where you can have uh, solutions from our technology partners as well as services partners. They make these solutions available in GCP Marketplace, and they're available for you to configure and deploy via single click. So similarly, what we are doing is for Anthos, we have a similar GCP uh, marketplace where Anthos applications, which have been certified and validated by us, can also be used by you or a, by your organization to deploy accordingly. What runs across the whole thing, of course, are two key things, right? Policy management or Anthos config management. This is the whole, uh, you know, GitOps uh, uh, driven uh, uh, configuration management. So you have a single source of truth for you know, all the configurations that you want to do across your clusters. And basically, the agents that could be running on the different clusters or different premises will sort of sync up with the config management. And accordingly, if there is any deviation in the configuration, they would possibly get uh, you know, synced up to that state. Similarly, you can use this as a common way by which you can even push policies, networking, routing, security policies, et cetera, all across uh, different clusters too. And when we talk about operation management, at this, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you're running these workloads. Uh, you want to know if they are healthy. Uh, you want to collect certain metrics about it. You want to meet certain service level objectives that you may have. The whole tracing, alerting, dashboards, etc. So all of those obviously are our stack driver family of products, which range from not just, uh, you know. I would say logging, monitoring, tracing, debugging, and much more. So all of that comes under the ops management uh, side of things. So this, in summary, right, is uh, the entire Anthos solution. As you can see, uh, it's not going to be just one single service or one sort of a magical solution, but a suite of technologies that have come together to sort of meet, uh, you know, some of the tenets of modern application uh, development. So modernizing with Anthos, when we talk about it right uh, over here, uh, at, at its core, you can think of it like, you know, you have these clusters running on multiple uh, places. It could be on-premise in GKE, sorry, in GCP, or it could be on other clouds and so on and so forth. But you still want one control plane to sort of manage it all. So obviously, if you've got existing modern container-based applications, these are a perfect fit you know, for Anthos, and you could straight away get going with it. You could deploy these 
possibly on G, uh, Google Cloud. This could be on multi-cloud also. Uh, we've actually got now Anthos uh, that's running on even uh, AWS. It can provision clusters and let you manage from the single place. Other clouds are coming soon. Or you could possibly run it on your on-premise uh, networks also. Now, this is typically how you would look at it like, hey, if I've already got something containerized, right? Then uh, uh, you know, you're set uh, for using this platform right now. On the other hand, it is possible that you might have legacy VM-based applications. For that, we've also got an Anthos Migrate utility, which can actually take these VM-based legacy applications and then uh, create uh, you know, a container-based uh, artifact around that and deploy that on GKE, thereby helping you to sort of uh, you know, modernize your applications and move them on to the container-based world. So in short, uh, you know, Anthos simplifies operations, obviously, because behind the scenes, uh, via the service mesh, et cetera, it gives you uh, out of the box telemetry for different services. So multiple metrics, uh, the golden signals, uh, different SLOs that you may have, you could sort of get these uh, straight uh, off the bat. Uh, now, since you're having a single plane of control, since you're using Anthos config management, you can now enforce these policies straight away uh, you know, across from the single, uh, you know, control plane itself without sort of depending upon special configuration in each of these areas. This is what I was talking about uh, is the single control panel or control plane of glass or control plane, depending upon, you know, various words that people use. But this basically is running in GCP. And as you can see, it gives you a single view of all the clusters that you know this uh, anthos uh, control plane is managing and when we talk about clusters take a look at it closely if you can see uh, while there are uh, you know four to five clusters that are mentioned over here you will also see that some cluster is running on uh, gke which is in google cloud platform but some other cluster is running even on aws so you can see that by a single plane all your clusters no matter where they are running you should be able to get a view into it. In fact, even uh, when you go into each of these clusters, it obviously will give you a lot more detail, even in terms of what services are running and so on and so forth. Uniform observability, as I mentioned to you, this primarily uh, you know, is, is, is given to you by, of course, underlying uh, various services. We have primarily Istio Service Mesh, the Service Mesh for Anthos, as well as some of the products we have in the Stack Driver suite of tools that make it uh, sort of visible to you in terms of the services you're running, interdependency between the services, the different golden signals that SREs know about when it comes to uh, you know making sure that the service is running healthy and so on and so forth. So all of these metrics or telemetry that we are talking about is provided out of the box. Operational agility obviously comes in because you have now the ability to use that single control panel and decide where you want to deploy your service, which cluster, uh, basically even versions of a service, even do certain other things like canary releases, split the traffic across to your services, so on and so forth. So all of this flexibility that you always know about is provided to you in this environment. So if I have to summarize uh, my presentation in terms of what could be the benefits of uh, Google Cloud's Anthos, Obviously, the first is you can modernize anywhere, right? Because these clusters could be running anywhere, but still controlled by a central uh, uh, place. Uh, security guardrails in place, you can completely automate uh, this whole thing because from a central place, using GitOps uh, uh, you know, methodology, you can have a single source of truth where all your policy configurations, et cetera, are in place. And then the other agents on clusters will simply sync and set the state uh, accordingly. Of course, built for portability, you know, the underlying things are open source technology. So that's our fundamental premise from day one. We want it to be portable, extensible, plus get all the benefits that open source provides. And we've also recently, uh, you know, published um, a paper where how Google Cloud Anthos gives you a lower to total cost of ownership. Uh, you can always go to our site and get this uh, paper that we published in conjunction with the research firm. So in short, uh, we talked about the key tenets of modern application development. Uh, then we took a very high level look at what uh, you know, the history has been of containers, orchestration, how Anthos came to be, uh, the software components that form Anthos, and how Anthos uh, you know, brings you some of the benefits. 
that you are uh, seeing today. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I'm sure Umesh will now go ahead and even give you some of the other detailed slides. So over to you, Umesh. Thanks. Thanks, Roman. Uh, uh, thank you for the really nice presentation. Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. OK, so uh, Roman quite clearly explained about Google's journey with uh, you know modernizing infrastructure uh, in the time you know, the first few services of Google Cloud platforms were launched. And uh, if you look at right uh, the way technology is changing today, and then the way it is improving the processes that we never thought existed a few years back, uh, it's amazing to see them, right? So cloud computing started with infrastructure as a service, and you know the traditional approach of moving to cloud was just you know put your uh, monolith as it is to cloud, and then slowly it changed. Uh, you know people moved from monoliths to more of uh, stateless applications, and then. You know the uh, the modernization was taking place, and uh, that's when the the container world came into picture, and you know people started using containers, and so container was the third form of it, and the latest one is being the serverless. So if you look at this, right, the true true cloud ROI, right, it comes in terms of uh, only if you are modernizing your applications uh, with uh, with the change in technology, right. So you might be running something on VMs today, but uh, uh, if you haven't moved to containers already, uh, then you are lagging behind. And if even if you are on containers today, like Kubernetes or wh whatever the platform you're using, and you haven't thought about serverless, then again, uh, you have to rethink about your approach to application modernization. So uh, traditionally, you know, it has to be uh, app and dev, and then uh, you know you modernize after moving to cloud. All that practice comes into picture. So this was one of the slide where uh, Roman quite clearly explained, you know, the Anthos as a platform and what open source platform, uh, you know, tools it is made up of, uh, starting from uh, the GKE and the service mess and the, uh, you know, cloud run, config management and you know, stack driver logging and monitoring, which is operations. What I'm going to do is I will quickly go uh, a, a inch deep in each of these components and explain. You know how how they all uh, work together. How individually they are excellent in what they do, and how Anthos as a platform work. So, uh, w w w uh, one of the components is Anthos GK, right? Uh, before starting Anthos GK, what is GK? So we, you spoke, you heard about you know Kubernetes being being the leading containerization orchestration platform. So uh, GK is the managed Kubernetes. From Google Cloud Platform, so uh, since Kubernetes was one of those uh, you know uh, projects which came within Google, the kind of support Google has for it is immense. And the newer versions of Kubernetes, uh, one of the uh, you know things with Kubernetes engine is that uh, you worry about deploying your applications, and the whole of uh, orchestration layer is completely managed by Google Cloud. Uh, so some of the key features of GKE uh, are, you know, you get a rich and powerful UI. So if you look at the architecture diagram on the right here, uh, you know, uh, one of the hardest part, even uh, if you manage Kubernetes clusters yourself, is that you have to manage the master node. And the master node is essentially the brain of Kubernetes, right? It, it runs the uh, it runs your applications essentially. So that is kind of completely taken care by Google Cloud. You worry about creating, you know, node pools, and you know, uh, how do you ap uh, apply uh, policies, and how do you run your applications, and you know how all of those GCP infrastructure comes into picture, the load balancers and disks, and you know the monitoring piece of it, right? So uh, some of the key highlights, if you have already used Kubernetes on premise or or with any other cloud vendor, is that you know. Uh, Kubernetes uh, GKE provides you uh, node node auto upgrades, uh, meaning you know you can upgrade nodes. Uh, nodes is essentially where you run your applications without any downtime. You can repair your apps automatically, so which is essentially node auto repair, right? So you if there is a kernel error, if uh, you know something failed at the OS level of the node, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, Kubernetes GKE health checks. Keeps on checking, you know, and uh, the health of uh, health of the infrastructure. And if there is something failing, it automatically repairs it. Now moving forward, right? So you get a really uh, uh, you know unified way of what your resource utilizations are, so that you can go back and optimize your uh, infrastructure as well. You have load balancing and auto scaling of resources, which is uh, again pretty standard. 
And one of the important differentiators of Google Cloud Platform in general, and as well as if you start using GKE, is the global uh, network of Google Cloud, which is, again, uh, global's virtual private cloud for you, yourself. So the VPC is uh, actually global in nature, meaning you do not have to uh, uh, you know, uh, worry about peering VPCs between different regions. And you know, where VPCs are traditionally uh, tied to a region. That's not more the case here. And a, and a good SLA of 99.95% right? So that's GKE, uh, managing Kubernetes on Google Cloud Platform. Now, if you look at Anthos GKE, uh, the core features of GKE remains the way they are. The only difference would be that it is a centralized multi-cluster management. So the features that I spoke about and the, and the uh, things that comes with GKE are essentially applied to uh, all the Kubernetes cluster that you manage with Anthos. It could be on on-premise, it could be on AWS, it could be on Google Cloud Platform, right? So what you get is a central, uh, you know, central multi-cluster management. And uh, the team that supports the Kubernetes GKE, right, uh, is the same SRE team that manages Google.com's infrastructure. So uh, you, you can be uh, you know, certain that you are in safe hand if something fails. At the same time, you get consistent Kubernetes experience, right? So you might be running a different version of Kubernetes on-premise and then uh, something else on uh, public cloud vendor one and then something else on Google Cloud, right? So then managing things and you know the deployment files, if you're aware about Kubernetes, uh, those can be difficult to manage. So it's a consistent Kubernetes experience for you in a very secure and managed way. And uh, all the upgrades, uh, you know, uh, with with respect to Kubernetes versions or any other tool that is uh, there with GKE, are uh, completely validated by Google and applied by Google. So uh, that's that's essentially what you know GKE and those GKE as a platform is. Now. Um, when we you know when we used to deploy applications uh, on VMs, we uh, we never had a uh, dedicated infrastructure to understand, you know, the state of our infrastructure. Uh, you know, uh, how does application one connects to application two? Application, you know, how how does uh, traffic flows? How to control that traffic flow, and all sort of that, right? So, if you look at that, uh, uh, Anthos Service Mesh is a mesh uh, service mesh platform for your microservices which are running in Kubernetes environment, and it is. Uh, Anthos Service Mesh is uh, basically uh, powered by the same open source platform Istio, uh, uh, and then it is really highly configurable and powerful tool to use. Now, some of the things that you do with, uh, you know, why why do you require Service Mesh at the first place? So uh, there are multiple reasons why you would need to, why you need to understand, right? How does my uh, application one connects to application two, and how do I restrict the flow of network uh, within my environment? Uh, how do I simplify, you know, security of my uh, applications? And you know, if someone has to talk to my services from outside or, or you know from cluster one to cluster two, how do I define those rules? And then when when there was no concept of service messages, it was uh, it was a heck of a ask to kind of. Uh, you know, use multiple tools to uh, achieve this. So with uh, with Anthos uh, Service Mesh, you can have a single Istio deployment uh, completely managed by Google Cloud for all your hybrid, uh, you know, clusters. So you can have, uh, again, cluster in on-premise, cluster on AWS, and then cluster on uh, G uh, GKE, which is, uh, you know, uh, Google Cloud's uh, infrastructure. And then your service mesh can be a single guy who sort of uh, manages, you know, how uh, each of the services running in different clusters talk to each other and, you know, uh, what could be the network flow for them. So as I said, right, uh, Anthos is basically, uh, Anthos service mesh is basically powered by Istio. So what other features that you get? So one of the things uh, which is very important when you when you uh, deal with multiple microservices is uh, observability part, right? So to, to know uh, that uh, how the state of my infrastructure is, is as important as, you know, whether they are running or not. So if something fails, if you don't know how things are running, it could be really troublesome to uh, kind of 
uh, go back and you know see uh, see look at the logs and figure out what went wrong right so that's uh, that's one of the key features of istio traffic control right uh, so uh, there is a uh, front end and then there is a authentication server so you know you you want to uh, redirect all the requests from coming com coming from uh, front end to the authentication server first before entering your environment so all those sort of settings can be done with uh, you know things like traffic control then security right uh, my uh, I'm, I'm allowing i'm allowing my uh, application one to connect with application four but at the same time i do not want any communication between service four and service five they could be of different vendors those microservices could be of from different vendors or or there could be uh, different use cases to it so you have a central security layer for for your uh, service mesh as well uh, fault injection right so fault injection is a way by which you sort of uh, disturb your environment uh, in the sense you know you uh, you induce failures to your infrastructure uh, to see you know how things are reacting so uh, things like if you want to do you know rate limiting and uh, you you need to understand that uh, you know uh, if if i send these many requests how my front end is going to handle it and how how many requests are going to my caching layer or how many things are being authenticated by the authenticator all that sort of things you know you get do with uh, fault injection and understand how your infrastructure behaves for certain loads right and then of course hybrid cloud as i explained earlier it's a single service it's a single service mesh uh, and then you can uh, uh, use this for all your infrastructure uh, running on different clouds or on premise now that was about uh, service mesh uh, in the same series if we move forward right so cloud run uh, uh, I, I was talking about uh, you know how application modernization is essential in uh, you know keeping yourself with up to date uh, of how technology is changing and uh, we spoke about moving from uh, you know dedicated servers to vms and then vms to containers and then containers to the next big thing which is uh, coming is serverless and everybody is talking about it and you know uh, uh, GKE you know, Kubernetes platform also required uh, some some service of, of that sort. So as Roman said, right, Knative is uh, one project which was again uh, open sourced by Google uh, with help of other uh, companies, and uh, which is uh, so Cloud Run is basically based on Knative running serverless workloads on Kubernetes, and uh, Cloud Run for Anthos is an extension to running serverless workloads anywhere so it could be gke it could be on premise so if you look at cloud run so cloud run uh, you know uh, is available as an independent service uh, as well in the google ecosystem google cloud ecosystem so what you see on the right hand corner is you know uh, a cloud run uh, dedicated service without uh, you know uh, kubernetes as an orchestration layer right so things that you uh, that you are running today uh, in on premise uh, or uh, on vms if you can package them in form of a container uh, in form of a docker container you can directly run them on cloud run without even uh, looking at something like uh, orchestrating with kubernetes right so that's the independent service of uh, uh, independent service available as a uh, uh, serverless offering from Google Cloud Platform. But at the same time, not all of your uh, use cases would uh, kind of run on independent Cloud Run. So for example, if you look at a uh, machine learning example where you want to train your algorithms with uh, a lot of data and then CPU is not uh, going to solve all the problems, you need uh, graphical processing units, GPUs, and then you know you need uh, a bunch of dedicated storage attached to uh, the, 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 the uh, algorithms that you run, right? That's where you kind of uh, need to look at running, uh, you know, a Cloud Run for Kubernetes, which is GKE. So Cloud Run for GKE is, again, a serverless offering. It supports your, uh, you know, GPUs. It supports uh, running all sort of applications that you normally run in a Kubernetes environment. Uh, and then, you know, uh, it sorts of uh, abstracts away the infrastructure. So serverless, the whole uh, uh, selling point of serverless is that you, you, you are abstracting infrastructure as much as possible. And you're not uh, sort of worrying about the state of the infrastructure affecting the state of your application. 
right? So that way, uh, Cloud Run is that service which sort of helps you with uh, running serverless workloads on uh, Google's Kubernetes engine. So uh, if uh, Cloud Run for Anthos is, again, the same thing, uh, it's just that you can run Cloud Run for Anthos serverless workloads on on-premise work, uh, on-premise Kubernetes clusters, or uh, you know your uh, GKE clusters running on Google Cloud Platform. So at uh, as of this uh, presentation, Cloud Run for Anthos is uh, available for only Anthos GKE uh, uh, and GKE on-prem. So GKE on-prem is nothing but you know your on-premise cluster uh, uh, which is attached to Anthos GKE, right? Anthos as a platform. So it is not available for other platforms as of now, but uh, uh, keep looking, the support might be available soon. Okay, uh, moving to configuration management, uh, Anthos config management, right? So uh, policy management is uh, one of the important tasks when you talk about distributed systems and uh, managing policies has been uh, a, a difficult task for security engineers for uh, your DevOps engineers for your, uh, you know, L1, L2 engineers. Uh, so Anthos config management, uh, you know, uh, in in in, uh, in congestion with uh, other services uh, of Google Cloud Platform, uh, sort of uh, automates and manage your policies at scale for you. So, you know, you uh, if you look at this, how does it look like, right? So you have a cluster running on on-premise, you have a cluster running on Cloud Platform 1, and then you have a cluster running on uh, you know, uh, Google Cloud Platform. Now, uh, in a normal way, if you have to manage policies for all of these clusters, configuration information for all of these clusters, you would essentially have three different repositories, uh, all of them having different commands and you know the way of you manage them. With config, Anthos config management, you have a single uh, repository where you keep your uh, policies as a code, uh, which I'll talk about uh, in a bit, right? And then you apply a uh, uh, apply those policies to all of these clusters. And then when you apply those policies to these clusters, there is a desired state that you want your infrastructure to be in, and then you know there is an actual state that that your infrastructure runs in. So there is an operator which checks for this. What was your desired state and what is your actual state? And then based on the policies that you have defined, it, it sorts of uh, makes your infrastructure uh, uh, you know, uh, in the desired state possible, right? So uh, it's again, it's continuous enforcement of policies. Uh, and then uh, one of the things that I spoke about was policy as a code. So you guys might be familiar with infrastructure as a code uh, being really famous, right? Uh, uh, launching infrastructure on uh, hybrid cloud, public clouds uh, with uh, just code, right? In the same way, uh, uh, you can define your configuration management as well as as a code. So you have, uh, you, you keep the resources, you keep your policy in a central Git repository and uh, you write it in this, uh, again, standard YAML based format which is uh, you know, which is the same theme language from how Kubernetes deployments are done, right? And then you have uh, features such as pre-validation, and uh, you know you can pre-validate the policies before you before they actually apply to your infrastructure to see if you have uh, uh, you have made the right changes. And uh, there are seamless rollbacks available, and uh, you know you can integrate uh, easily with your SCM tools that you might be using today, right? So all of that uh, is completely managed by uh, Google Cloud for you uh, in form of Anthos Config Management. Okay, so uh, please, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in chat. We can uh, uh, answer them. Uh, Roman is there. Uh, I will continue with the next set. So if you look at that, right, we, we spoke about uh, uh, the service mess, uh, the GKE part, the service mess part, uh, the serverless part of Anthos, and then you know uh, we spoke about how configurations are managed in Anthos. Now we, uh, I'll be talking about uh, how does modern CI/CD looks like with Anthos, and what are the platforms, what are the tools that are that are supported in the Google ecosystem, and how do you uh, essentially manage them? So DevOps uh, processes are uh, uh, actually uh, not really standard with uh, all the 
uh, all the enterprises in the market, right? Uh, they could be different uh, ways you do DevOps versus uh, how we do DevOps versus how someone else do DevOps, right? It totally depends upon how, uh, what kind of applications you have and what kind of teams you manage. But uh, what I'm trying to uh, sort of uh, uh, say here is that usually there are three teams, uh, you know, involved in a DevOps process. Uh, the first one is developers, uh, you know, you have uh, operators, which is your operations team. And then, of course, security is also a team which is also called DevSecOps, right? So these are the three teams which essentially comes into picture when you want to design your DevOps solution and you want to uh, achieve a really good DevOps state in your infrastructure. So uh, what, what essentially uh, is happening here is that, you know, your developers, keep your, uh, uh, you know, your code, your actual code uh, in the uh, central uh, Git repository. That's where they push the code. That's where they manage their codes, right? And then from there on, uh, there is a CI tool. Uh, again, it could be, there are multiple tools available. I will kind of show you in the next slide, but there is a CI tool which sort of uh, integrates that and uh, sort of, uh, you know, builds the container artifacts for you, right? So container artifacts are, uh, uh, since we are talking about Anthos and we are talking about Kubernetes platform, uh, that's when we are talking about, uh, you know, Docker images being the end for us. So essentially the developers push the code to GitHub repository. There is a CI pipeline which kicks in uh, with the help of a CI tool. It builds the Docker image for you and it stores in a, uh, stores in a central uh, Docker repository called container registry, right? So container registry is a, uh, it's like a Docker hub, a uh, completely managed container registry platform for Google Cloud. So that's your CI part, right? That's where it essentially, uh, your, your, your Docker artifacts, your Docker uh, files, your Docker images are getting stored into, uh, so your Docker images get stored to container registry and your Docker files and other artifacts are in your Git repository. Now, if you, Look at what does uh, operations team does, right? So essentially, there is a, uh, a copy of uh, how the overall deployment of Kubernetes is done is kept at another repository, right? And then this uh, another repository with help of a config management tool uh, pulls the image from a content registry and then you know it deploys to. Uh, uh, the Kubernetes platform, right? So if you look at this uh, config management, uh, there is a tool uh, called Customize, which which is uh, uh, again to sort of bundle your uh, deployment files uh, is used. So that's the ops part of it. Now, at the same time, if you're talking about security policies, so you, uh, you know, you have uh, another branch where your security related configurations are kept and with the help of a policy manager, you sort of deploy those uh, security policies uh, continuously to the uh, GKE platform, right? So this is an overall automated CI/CD process which is available, and uh, I'll speak about the tools which are sort of supported. Uh, the integrations are available. Not all of them; in those integrations are with respect to Anthos, but in general, Google Cloud, uh, you know, uh, integrations with Google Cloud. So if you look at uh, uh, these are the four steps of a DevOps process. You have your source, the build and test, artifact management, and then the deployment part. So you, so Google's own way of managing your sources, uh, you know, uh, CSR, which is again a source code repositories, and then uh, uh, GitHub, uh, GHE, GitLab, uh, all of them are supported, uh, available as an easy integration. Uh, for building and testing, uh, you have uh, container builder specifically for uh, building you know container images but there is a uh, another tool called cloud build as well which could be used for normal vm based deployments and then you have all the uh, popular ci tools available here uh, circle ci jenkins tarvis right now uh, after you build right so the artifact man uh, management is done uh, Either uh, you can use container registry, which is again a fully managed uh, uh, Docker hub for you, uh, private uh, GitHub, rep uh, private Docker registry for you. And then you have support for, uh, you know, Docker hub and AWS S3 and Artifactory and, uh, you know, uh, QA. So 
the final part is the deployment part so spanicker is uh, one of those uh, again open source tools which are uh, used for kubernetes deployment to uh, multiple clusters so uh, uh, not just spanicker but there are other integrations available as well uh, from the deployment process from the cd pipeline process so that's the overall cd part okay so two pillars uh, if you look at this uh, diagram uh, there were two pillars to the whole uh, ecosystem of uh, you know anthos one was config management and one was the operations piece of it right so uh, we spoke about config management how does you, you know you apply your policies to all the infrastructure layer uh, and the tools and services and uh, another important topic uh, that i'm going to speak about is uh, you know the operations management as to looking into how things are happening overall right so if you if you look at uh, so operations of stack driver has been renamed to operations uh, uh, and then uh, so it's the logging and monitoring tool uh, for the overall google ecosystem so you have these five pillars of uh, of the operations tool right you have cloud logging, you have cloud monitoring, you have uh, tracing, and then you have debugger, and then you have profiler. So essentially, how do you monitor, troubleshoot, and improve your application performance is dependent upon how uh, efficiently you use these uh, you know, different services within the operations suite. So uh, how does uh, cloud logging and uh, cloud monitoring, right? So these are infrastructure level monitoring by default available for the Kubernetes clusters uh, in the Google Cloud Platform and uh, other services as well. But at the same time, they are also available for you to integrate them with your applications. So you can, if you want a fully managed, uh, you know, a logging, mon logging and monitoring platform, uh, you could, uh, you know, look at this to sort of uh, manage a single plane for yourself, uh, looking at infrastructure logs and applications logs in the single console. So uh, that's how uh, cloud logging and monitoring works. Cloud trace uh, is basically, you know, a tracing tool which gives you uh, uh, information about, uh, you know, uh, how does, uh, you know, latency between application one and application two looks like. Uh, and, you know, you can uh, imp look at the reasons behind the latency and, you know, how does, uh, uh, how to basically, uh, how does your infrastructure is behaving? If there is a slowdown in your infrastructure, which parts, which pieces I need to troubleshoot. Uh, the next part is cloud debugger. So if you uh, look at debugger, debugger, right, it kind of tells you the state of your running applications in the real time. So you, when, when you are actually debugging your infrastructure, you do not have to sort of uh, when you're debugging your application it's not a downtime your users are not impacted uh, you know uh, you just uh, it's a completely managed platform which sort of gives you the health of uh, you know your applications in the real time how do you how does your applications are working okay so with that uh, i also want to talk about uh, one uh, new thing which is uh, recently announced and it came out of beta uh, which is Anthos Migrate. So I think Roman touched upon it a bit. So Anthos Migrate is uh, uh, is a service which is available uh, for you to migrate your on-premise resources uh, running on VMs uh, directly to containers. So currently, if you go back to your you know um, IT teams and you go back to your application teams, they write that you know uh, not available for upgrade, and there are tons of uh, uh, steps involved and human efforts involved, money involved to migrate them to Kubernetes-based or, or container-based platforms. So Anthos Migrate is the service which sort of uh, you know takes away this heavy lifting of migrating them from uh, VMs to uh, GK directly into containers. So what essentially happens behind the scene is that, you know, you, uh, when, you uh, when you use Anthos migrate, you basically get a uh, sense of, uh, you know, you, you get into your applications and, you know, it sort of builds, uh, you know, container images for you. It builds the Kubernetes deployment files for you. It, it builds uh, all the things that are required for your application to run on Kubernetes. 
and uh, that that's like all the deployment files all the service files uh, uh, all the crd cli uh, all that heavy lifting is done with anthos migrate so uh, la rather than uh, you know looking at lifting and shifting you basically uh, introduce something called lift lift and modernize play right and then uh, another one of the differentiators for it is that it it has built in testing you can test before you kind of run them pro in production and the kind of uh, labor requirements are minimal uh, there is a minimal downtime uh, as well and the overall complexity of the infrastructure is uh, very less with that, uh, I want to summarize my, uh, you know, session. Uh, you know how hybrid is done right with Anthos. So Anthos is a completely software-based stack. It's no hardware involved. Uh, so when I say no hardware involved, meaning you you might be running, uh, you know, infrastructure on on-premise, but Anthos as a platform is completely software-based. So uh, what it means is that you get started within few hours rather than in minutes uh, rather than in months sorry and then uh, all the components of anthos are built on top of open source platforms so uh, that way you are at peace of not being in a vendor lock-in scenario as well tomorrow you want to move your uh, you know cloud run uh, cloud run for anthos workloads out of google cloud to uh, or back to on-premise or to other clouds you know you uh, it's essentially managed k-native so you are you do not have to worry about any of vendor lock-in because all all the platforms from uh, you know uh, top to bottom are open sourced and completely managed then uh, uh, infrastructure abstracted away right so it tries to uh, you know keep the infrastructure as much abstracted as uh, as possible by uh, giving you time and space to sort of focus on building applications rather than uh, you know spending time and uh, having large infrastructure teams so that's a hybrid cloud a hybrid method now migration journeys are usually dynamic uh, so like there are there are uh, there are lift and shift workloads there are refactor workloads there are uh, you know um, you need to rewrite certain things and then you need to uh, make them work on vms first and then you know then there might be stateful applications then stateless applications there are multiple ways you look at it right so generally uh, you know you look at uh, when you want to move to cloud you want to do a lift and shift you first want to get to the cloud as as quickly as possible so you lift and shift your workloads right and then uh, the another approach is that you, you 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 not only you lift and shift but you you optimize as well when you're moving so things like you know you you might be having uh, uh, 2 tb of storage attached to your database instance which is not required essentially but you are planning for capacity which which are sort of things you don't have to uh, take when you're moving to cloud right so that's lift and optimize you can go you you can start small and grow as you want so that sort of uh, optimization piece of it and then you know once you have uh, sort of uh, migrated to cloud and optimize your workloads then you sort of move to make your applications more cloud native, right? So you modernize your applications uh, post the migration to cloud. And then once they are modernized, right, uh, then that's where this Kubernetes piece and the complete container orchestration piece com comes into picture. Uh, uh, and then the next step would be the serverless piece of it. Yeah. So with that, I would like to give it to Aditya. Aditya? Right. Thanks, Umesh. Uh, thanks for the detailed presentation. I think that was a great slide to end on. Uh, that really summed it up very well. Um, effectively, what it says was, uh, you don't have to, you know, move to the cloud and modernize at the same time. There are these are two different things, and you need not do it at the same time. Uh, you can you can modernize and uh, make your applications more agile while staying on prem, and then once you're ready to fully move to the cloud you can make that shift. And that is what Anthos really enables us to do. That's a great slide to end. Uh, I'll just take a moment here to uh, give you, again, reintroduce Sears, basically. Uh, we have been, a, a, we are a premier partner of Google's and we have been for five long years now. Uh, just, this is just a brief uh, you know, timeline of our partnership with Google. We actually started in 2006 as a product engineering company. 
and back in 2006 actually we had uh, begun using g suite and we realized the capabilities of you know its collaboration how effective it is to help us collaborate more effectively so uh, the clients we were working with we took g suite to them and we helped them uh, implement g suite uh, uh, and it it ha- it en- enhanced their collaborative capabilities quite a bit uh, and so uh, we we loved the google platform right from then and then when we launched our own product actually happy work which is an hr related product we used google's app engine which is the ne- next product that they launched and for p- some people who already know actually app engine was one of the first products of google cloud before it was actually even branded as google cloud so we started using app engine back in 2010 and then uh, once uh, the google cloud platform was launched formally in 2015 we were in a great position to also take the cloud platform to our clients and so um, as you can see on the slide we were the first globally to get to a premier partner status in 2015 and since then um, we've been winning uh, awards uh, every year from google at to google next in san francisco and uh, significant milestones have been achieved uh, since then as you can see here so um, i'd love to get in touch with you i mean our team would love to get in touch with you uh, any of you who are interested in exploring anthos further i think we had one question from mr ravi khan here who would like to try out anthos and he probably uh, is looking for a demo account uh, we love to get in touch with you mr ravi to help you get started of course there's a demo that you can use uh but uh, to get more hands on and deeper uh, uh with anthos so we'd love to help you out there uh, uh this this just uh, this slide is a uh, you know just to give you a picture of the kind of clients we have uh, what what is the broad range of clients that we have you can see traditional enterprises large tra- traditional enterprises like tata chemicals and then on the other side we also have digital native startups like bounce and dunzo rapido um so for for all these clients uh, we have been you know we have different strategies uh, to help them modernize and digitize and uh, that's what you can see on the slide um with that uh, i'd like to uh, end our session here um thank you guys for attending the session thanks thanks everybody thanks for your time